You're very welcome along to the National Basketball Arena in Tala this morning. And we're going to kick off the All-Ireland Schools League Finals Day 2 with a battle between Kalosha Enda of Galway and Kalosha Kieran of Leakslip, County Kildare. I'm joined here by Conor Meany. Conor, it is set to be an interesting game. Kalosha Enda, of course, won the Schools Cup back in January, so perhaps coming into this game as favourites. Yeah, it looks like it's an interesting game. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how... Karen McLean does, who's obviously been just named on the Irish Under-16 panel, and uh, they have the pedigree that they've won the cup, and with the added fact that uh, Colossia Ciarán are without Quiva Masterson, which is a huge loss, so it'll be interesting to see how they're able to kind of adapt and maybe fill in for a massive void in their team. Yeah, indeed, Quiva, of course, also on Andy Gill's Under-16 international team, so a big loss for them. She picked up an injury at a skiing, accident, uh, skiing trip, um, so... We wish her a speedy recovery, as I'm sure it does head coach Andy Gill. And you said Cara McLean, her sister Ava, is also one to watch on this team. Cara, of course, was MVP for that Schools Cup game, which they won 53-36 against a uh, public school from Kenmare. And a few other notable performances from that win. Ellen Power and Lucy Hines also ones to watch here for Kalosha Enda as the foul is called 718 to go here in this first quarter and we're headed to the free throw line with Kalosha Enda Kara with the first one to get us off the mark here And two from two. And a good steal there from Kalosha Enda. It doesn't fall for her though. Evie Walsh, that is. Comes back outside. That shot, dr shot drops short though. And Kalosha Kiran, who have, are, of course, powerhouses in schools basketball, particularly at under 19 level the last couple of years. Six fifty six to play in this first quarter. As Kalosh Kiran setting up their offense. Kicks it outside. And a foul is called there. Tough defense there, Connor from Kalosh Enda. Yeah, they uh, are pressing and they're willing to kind of jump and, and trap wherever they can. And then in the half court, they look like they're a little bit more solid and just kind of staying back. So they look like they're well organized. So it'll be difficult for Kalash to carry on to break them down. But that's a fantastic move inside and steps around the defender. Lovely finish inside. Yeah, indeed. Ties the game level at two apiece. As Kalash Kiran come out. Flying with the ball, but Cara McLean with the interception. Yeah, early, early days, it looks like it, it's going to be a case of how well Clash to Carroll can take care of the ball. They don't have a huge amount of depth. They only have three subs here. So Clash down there are going to try and press and, and jump all over them and see what they can kind of force. And Ellen Power deemed to have gone over the baseline there. So it's going to go out for a Clash to Carroll ball. Six oh one to play here in this opening first quarter. Of course, it's an action-packed day of schools basketball here. And a game I'm sure a lot of people are looking forward to is the next game on the fixtures. It is, of course, the under-19A boys final between St. Malachy's of Belfast, Belfast even, and St. Joseph's the Bish of Galway. Great score there from Ava McLean. And they, and they forced the turnover again there with the press. This is exactly what we're talking about. They have to be able to take care of the ball against that press and 
at the moment. They've already turned the ball over two or three times, which would be a worry for uh, for Yvonne Bracken. Foul calls there for Evine Walsh. She'll be headed to the free throw line. And just the remainder of the fixtures today, that's the only boys game today. It's going to be followed by two girls games, under 19 C girls at half two, St. Louis Carrick Macross, who are of course cup champions at that age group, against St. Joseph's of Castle Bar. And that's going to be followed by the last game of the day at quarter past four, St. Mary's of Middleton County Cork against Tullamore College, representing the Midlands. On the Midlands. On the Midlands is right. And we're headed for a timeout here, 5.21 to play. Five twenty-one to go here at the National Basketball Arena. Kalasha end of Galway leading Kalasha Kiran six-two at the moment. Just coming in off a timeout. If you've just joined us, Kalasha end playing in green and Kalasha Kiran in red, and it's going to be a Kildare ball. Interestingly, out of the timeout that they don't press this time, so they sit back. Oftentimes, after a timeout, they might have drawn up a press break, so you don't want them to be as comfortable. Clash Kiran looking to get through that. Great, great score there from Emma Scully. Nice move through. Yeah, I think that's her second basket of the game. She did a great job earlier on stepping through, so she's got good footwork. Liffey Celtics obviously would be the school associated with this, or the club associated with this, and a lot of these girls are getting a high level of coaching regularly, so you can see that high level of skill. I think Titans are the clash to end of school. Yeah, the McLeans are there all right in Titans. Doing great underage work there in Galway with that club. Four thirty-three to play here in this opening quarter. And we are on the break with Kalosh Enda. Evine Walsh misses the layup. And Kalosh Kiran now on the break. And a lovely score again from Emma Scully. Yes. She's becoming the target woman for them there. Some solid hatching there. She didn't get back on defense and uh, ultimately got a fast break layup out of it. Sounds like something you'd do, Connor. I just don't get up and down the court at all <laughs> anymore. 3.9 to 3.9. <laughs> Move doesn't go for Ellen Power. And again, Kalosh Shakira on the tie game here, 3.47 to go. A lovely, lovely score there from Emily Smith. Yeah, Yvonne Bracken will be delighted. She called a timeout down 6-2, and all of a sudden it's a 6-0 run out of it. Travel a call there, yeah. It's ignited the Galway crowd, though. We have the press back here. So we'll see if they jump again. Shot goes up from Emily Smith. Doesn't drop for it though, and Kalash to Enda. 
and Cara McLean tried the floater over the head of Emma Scully and Scully comes out with it she's doing great work in there uh, I think Clarissa Caron got away with a foul there but just for Clarissa Caron when they break that press they don't really want those early shots where there's no rebounders inside they got to have a little bit more patience they've done well when they've got into the key so when they break the press just don't panic Ball is popped outside there to Lucy Hines. And it's got out for a clash to end the ball. 2.53 to go here in the first. Nice ball in to McLean. Yes. Ava this time. Clash to Carroll, fell asleep there. Inbounder just stepped in and gets an easy layup. A nice clash to end the line play. That was terrible, terrible joke. <laughs> Baseline ball here from Kalash Enda. I wish everyone at home watching this could see you right now and how proud you are of that terrible pun. Shot goes up here from Kalash Enda. Good rebounding by Power. And they get it again. But Kalash Shakiran. Just managed to steal it away. Long shot goes up. Oh, great score. Yeah, lovely three. Again, though, that is the shot that if you don't have much rebounding inside in the first couple of seconds of the offense, it can be tough to rely on shots like that all the game long. But if they are going to win the game, they will need to knock down some of them. Ava McLean doing great work in there. And she's rewarded for it. She'll be heading to the free throw line. Clash Karen will be happy though. It's like their their half court defense has been very solid. It's only when they've kind of fouled and sent Clash to end it to the free throw line or kind of fell asleep on some end lines or turned the ball over. But when it's just five on five in the half court, they've done a good job defensively so far. First one's good for McLean. Two out of two, and we're back to a one-point game, just ticking under the two-minute mark here. And unlucky there for Kalash Kiran, they've put it out of bounds, so Kalash Enda back in the attack, and a jump ball is called there. Great battling from Kalash Kiran's Emily Smith. Yeah, she did a great job. Kalash Kiran are leading by a point, but a probably turn the ball over six or seven times here's another one and that's going to be a worry for Yvonne McLean doesn't finish a bit of a relief for Kalash Shakiran as at the other end a super left hand layup from Emily Smith yeah and on the other side Kalash and uh, when they have fast breaks if you have a player already up there taking a fast break you don't need to commit all of your players so far up ahead that's the second time now that a Clash to Caron player has been all alone in the other half and ended up with a fast break layup. And when it's a low scoring game like this, you can't afford to give up too many of those points. Good movement there from Kalash to end a season with Ellen Power. 102 to play in the first quarter. Gully at the top of the key, gives it off to Smith. Nice move from Smith, but it doesn't fall for her. Powers shots, rebounded well by Walsh. And that puts Kalosha Enda back into the lead. And again, back-to-back -back scores from Walsh. Yeah, it's nice stuff there. Flash to Caron got in a little bit of trouble there the last time because both Emily Smith and Emma Scully both have two fouls each, so they couldn't really be as aggressive defensively as they'd like to, and they end up giving up a relatively easy shot under the basket. So 13 seconds to go, and it's Clash to end it with a three-point lead. Three, 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 one, 
comes out to McLean. She takes the long shot. Drops short, though. Point three seconds here on the clock for this inbound. And we'll have the end of quarter then. And there it goes, 16-13, Kalosha end a lead at the end of the first. Welcome back here to the National Basketball Arena where we are just about to get quarter two underway in this under 16A Girls All-Ireland Schools League final between Colossia Enda in green and Colossia Kieran of Leak Slip in red. Close first quarter, Connor. Yeah, uh, Colossia Enda had the brighter start and the brighter finish but Colossia Kieran did a good job in the kind of middle part there. The worrying part is they've turned the ball over quite a few times so they can't afford that. And the other issue is potentially because they don't have a huge bench, they have two players on two fouls each, uh, Emily Smith and Emma Scully. So that's a little bit of a worry as well for Yvonne. So Particularly as they've been two of their key scorers for, um, for Klaus Kieran. We're back to a one-point game nonetheless with 7.34 to go here in the second quarter. They are, of course, eight-minute quarters here. Yeah, just what you were saying, they are two of the leading scorers. Emma Scully has had six in that first quarter and Emily Smith had the other seven points, so they contributed all the points in that first quarter. So You don't want them to be getting into any more foul trouble? No. Here's Smith again at the top of the key. Gives it off to Rachel Ibrahim and it's back to Smith. A lovely take inside by Emma Scully. Great hands. Yeah, great work between the two. Good understanding between the two of them and a good kind of pass inside, strong finish and a layup. So it will certainly be something that Kyle Walsh on the on the sideline for Clash Tender will be looking to how do you limit those two players because as we said at the start of the game it's who's going to be able to fill in for Quiva Masterson and so far it's the joint work of the, uh, of both kind of Scully and Smith that has been able to do that Scully for the and one and she gets it And it is Cara McLean across course to Hines. Big shot doesn't go. And Emily Smith under the boards and at pace bringing the ball up for Klaus Kiron. Gives it off to Scully. Out to Rachel Ibrahim. Cross court to Smith. And it just came off Klaus Kiron there under the boards off Alva Harrington. So it's going to be a Klaus Ender ball. Outside again here to Hines. She fancies these long shots. That one didn't go. And again, it is Smith who's there to collect. And a lovely 
move up the court by Kalashnik here on. Ibrahim just wasn't able to finish it. Yeah, again, for Klaasenda, when they're in transition defense, they really need to get bodies right back into the key. They're giving up a little bit too easily some fast break layups. Unlucky there for Evin Walsh. And again, Klaas Kiran doing great work under the boards. Not giving them any second chances at the moment. Scully. And Klaasha Enda and Lucy Hines on the break. Yeah, that's a tough one for Clash to carry on because it looked like Scully drew a foul down this end. It wasn't called and it leads to a breakout that's two free throws down the far end. But just for both teams at the side of the second quarter, we've, we're seeing more and more kind of long shots. Let's just, just settle down a little bit, keep, keep the ball moving. We're not getting close to any shot clock violations, so try and find an easier pass underneath the basket if, if at all possible. Hines misses the first. Great rebound there by Scully. She's showing a bit of everything so far in this game. Yeah, definitely. Keeps a hold of it at the top of the key under pressure. Gets it out to Ibrahim. Good hands though from Evine Walsh. Pops out of bounds and gives them time to set up their defense again. Yeah, the, the issue at the moment for Clash Carroll in, in the half court is that because there's only really two players scoring that Clash to are able to really key in on those two. So they need to find a way to get some scores from other players as well. A slightly more balanced attack. And yeah. shot clock. So that should have been a shot clock violation. The referees deemed that the ball was already in the hands and that the horn shouldn't have gone, but it's a little bit unfair. And we now have a jump ball and another turnover, so it's a, a tough 30 seconds there on Clash to Kieran. Players tend to stop when the buzzer goes. Five seventeen to play here in the second, and a draw game. Good shot goes up. It doesn't fall for though, and again it's Scully. And she draws a foul. But what we're seeing here as well is that Clash End are going to their bench a lot more. They have more depth. So at the moment it's a tie game, but it's still early days in the second quarter. So Clash End are hoping that if they can keep pressing and keep kind of the game with up tempo that they'll be able to tire out Clash to Kieran as we get into the second half. Travel called, yeah. Against Alva Harrington, so it's going to be a Clash and the ball once more. 4.57 to go. Shot goes up, blocked somewhat by Emily Smith. So it's going out for a clutch and a ball. Still all square here. It's good defense though by Clash here, and they're not giving up anything right underneath the basket. They're forcing mid-range shots as much as possible and that's a nice block by Scully. Great stop by Scully, yeah. The other thing that they're doing though is that they're uh, they're matching up with Cara McLean as well, so she's not getting any easy looks. So if you can limit the other team's best score and then also just keep it tight underneath the basket and force them to shoot from the outside, it's a good strategy. Press is causing a bit of difficulty here though. Yeah, an eight second call. Look for Clash to Kieran. We must be up at 13 or 14 turnovers, and yet it's a tie game. Again, Scully with a super block. She's playing out of her skin in there. And super defense. Sees a turnover in favor of Klaus Shakiron. Yeah. Ava Harrington's doing a good job. She's been the one tasked with matching up with Cara McLean, so... 
she's doing the dirty work and then her teammates are keeping everything else kind of tied inside. And the other danger woman, Ava McLean, back on the court. Sometimes with a box and one, if, if you're the one who's getting that individual kind of mark on you, it's sometimes turning into a, you becoming a screener, getting other te uh, teammates wide open. Here they have a, a two a sisters, sisters yeah, yeah. A pick and roll. And sometimes the easy part of a box and one is doing the one part. It's uh, actually coordinating the box together. And in that case, there's a pick and roll where the rest of the box weren't really sure what to, how to help. Super stop at the other end by Cara McLean as well. It's gone out for a clutch. Kieran Ball, 3.32 to go here, and we are headed for a timeout. Welcome back here to the National Basketball Arena. 3.32 to go here in the second quarter of this under 16A Girls All-Ireland Clash. Clash and a leading by two. And Smith pops it outside to Scully. They almost keep a hand to it and Scully picks up the loose ball at the top of the key. Drives herself, Smith was calling for it outside. And Clash and a mop up the ball. McLean doesn't go. Tough pass to pull off. They managed to get away with it though. Foul draw on there. Clash to end there doing a good job though. As the ball gets into the key, they really swarm in and get a lot of hands in there. Ball goes to Scully. Scully taking on Ava McLean. Doesn't fall for her though, and Hines comes out. Somehow manages to keep a hand on it. Back out to Hines. McLean. And McLean again. This time Cara, and that shot doesn't go. 2.27 to go here, till half time. Yeah, I think Clash de Caron need to find a way to get an easy, easy basket here. They've struggled offensively in the last couple of minutes. And maybe they're gonna try and over the top. <laughs> it's just, it's tough. It may be a case that if they are going to do that, that it's Emma Scully who's throwing the pass. In to Harrington and back to Smith. Scully's there in support. Ibrahim back to Harrington. The pass to Smith doesn't go through though and McLean has it, fires it up the court. Oh, lovely. 
Lovely bounce pass around the defence from Walsh. And Ava McLean finishes. Yeah, lovely extra pass, but there's also a lovely pass by Karen McLean. You used to see young players be able to dribble and pass off the dribble with their left hand, and she found her teammate perfectly. It's a lovely skill. McLean, the fake. Good, good rebounding in there. Again from Amy Kelly for Kalash to carry on. Yeah, but this is what we said. It's kind of this is a danger time for Kalash to carry on a little bit. They're only four down at the moment with a minute and a half to go in the half, but they need to find a way to get a basket or two. The last thing they want to do is go down at the half by six or eight. Oh, I was going to say Evian Walsh did very well to keep it in there, but her toe just went out over the line. But in the last minute or two, we're seeing a couple of opportunities for Clash Down. They just haven't been able to knock down some layups, and they're starting to get a little bit of a chance. So it's something, again, that hopefully Clash to Kieran can, as we see, a turnover. Smith did her best there, but it just had a bit too much legs now, and she's called for a foul then at the other end, 58.7 yeah. so seconds. That's a few issues there, unfortunately, for Smith is that, look, if the ball goes out at the halfway line, so be it. Get your defense back, set up. Don't try and save it back inside where you can't see where it's going to go and it leads to a fast break. And then on top of that, you have two fouls already. Don't go for the block because all of a sudden now we have a third foul on one of the critical players for a class to care on. It looks like she might be heading to the bench for this last minute, so... What could have just been an inbound play from the sideline ends up in a in a much more difficult situation. Yes, indeed, she is being subbed off. Yeah, and she's been one of the key people for trying to break down this press as well. So it's now a five-point game. It's going to be important for Klaus to carry on to be able to kind of manage this press. Don't turn the ball over for the next minute. Pass is just going astray, though. Yeah, but uh, look, if they are going to turn the ball over, they want it to be dead ball turnovers like this. They, do, they just don't want it to be steals leading to fast break layups. Obviously, they don't want turnovers, but... Good work there inside from Christine Monchu. She's just subbed in, as we said, for Smith. And again, that pass just has a bit too much on it for Amy Kelly inside. 35.7 seconds to go here till a half. Yeah, you can hear Yvonne Bracken down the sideline asking the team to take care of the ball. But Klosh Ender deserve credit for that as well. It's their their full court press and trapping has kind of made Klosh to Kieran rush a little bit. And a lovely score there from Evine Walsh. Yeah, and Just here. getting that gap a little yeah. bit, Connor, before the half. The exact thing that we worried about. Uh, oh, no. And... <laughs> that's the last thing we wanted to see here is so the gap has uh, opened up to seven another turnover and now all of a sudden Emma Scully is going to have her third foul so what we kind of said with two minutes to go in this half was that we didn't want to see them turn the ball over let the gap open up to seven or eight and then also for the two most influential players to both have picked up their third foul is worrying so 11 seconds to go Clash to Kieran need to make sure they get this rebound if it's a miss That one's in, though. Yeah, it's an eight-point game. Whatever they do, just don't turn the ball over live. Um, we've turned the ball over live. The clean shot doesn't go, though. Yeah, they end up getting away with it. Jump ball, and it's going back to Kalash to Ender for 1.7 seconds. Going to have a timeout, I think, as Kalash to Ender are going to draw up something.
1.7 seconds to go here till half time and it is a Kalosha Enda inbound. Yeah, an See exciting what they run off end the of the out. half. That was a terrible pun again. I missed it almost. Was that bad? And no score off that inbound. So we head into halftime. Kalosha Enda leading 26-18.
Welcome back here to the National Basketball Arena in Tala. Quarter three is just about to get underway here in this under 16A All Ireland Schools League final. Colossia Enda of Galway leading at the moment 26 18 against Colossia Kiron of Leaf Slip. It's been an interesting first half though, very nip and tuck. Colossia Enda just managing to pull ahead there in the closing stages. Uh, Bit of tiredness maybe starting to creep in for Klaus Shakiran, as Connor mentioned earlier. The depth on their bench isn't that much. They've only three subs, Klaus Shakiran today. And they are, of course, as we said, missing the instrumental Quiva Masterson, Irish International, with Andy Gill's under 16 team. But the others have certainly stepped into the mark. Fantastic performances here across the team. And great rebounding inside there by Emma Scully. Puts Smith on the break and she gets it back to Scully. Good hands there from Evine Walsh to dispossess Kalash Shakiran on the drive through. Powers, fast break layup doesn't go though, and we're on the break instead with Smith. And she's deemed to have fouled the ball. Good take from Karen McLean. Doesn't fall for her though. And Klaus Shakiran do extremely well to get that out of trouble. It's going to be an eight second call though. Yeah. Six fifty to go here in the third. Game one of four today. As we mentioned, under 19A boys follows this. St. Malachy's of Belfast against St. Joseph's, the Bish, County Galway. Big day for Galway. Schools up here today. The Bish, of course, reigning league champions. They won it last year in a thriller. Scully. Pops it outside, out to Ibrahim. Good hands again by Walsh. She doesn't manage to keep a hand on it this time though. And knocks it out of bounds. Yeah, they're relentless defensively though. A lot of pressure. Good work there by Ava McLean. And that good work has resulted in a basket. So we're out to a 10 point game. Yeah, Clash to carry on just haven't been able to get any easy shots. Nice step through there, but again, Clash end up being very, very solid defensively. And they're doing a good job drawing fouls as well. So it's a 10-point game, but at the rate that Clash the Kiran is scoring, it's that's a big gap at the moment. Especially in such a low-scoring game. McLean to McLean. Cara gives it inside to Power. Her shot doesn't go though. And Emily Smith again to Ibrahim has Scully in support. Harrington launches across court to Scully. Again, good work there by Kyra McLean. And the foul is going to be called here against Grace Webb. Yeah, the refs are, are allowing a bit of contact, which is enabling Clash Ender to, to play that physical kind of in-your-face defense. Scully. Good hands from Karen McLean, though. Stops that en route to basket. I think that was a bit of a frustration shot. That any time she goes to drive to the basket, she swarmed, so she wants to. Ava does well. Doesn't fall. And again, it is Smith. She's doing a fantastic job in there. Scully. 
Scully. She was closed down straight away by Ava McLean. Nice move. Lovely drive through from Harrington. It doesn't fall for her, unlucky, because it was a great drive inside. Yeah, for Clash to carry on, if they're going to come back into this, it either has to be Ava Harrington or Amy, Amy Kelly to come up with an easy basket or two just to bounce it out a lot. I, I don't remember anyone... Have we had more than two points from anyone other than uh, Smith? Smith and Scully, yeah, have been dominating their scoring the majority of the 18 points, I would imagine. Yeah, Harrington has two points, but that's but that's it. So we said it earlier on with Masterson out that it was going to be a big question. And rather than having three big scores, you now only have two. Scully met by a wall of McLean sisters. Yeah, the McLeans are doing a good job. And as the game goes on, you can see that uh, Scully is getting more and more frustrated that she's having to do a lot working under the boards and then down the far end she's being hounded throughout Smith unfortunately out of bounds so he's going to go back for a colosh and a ball and it looks like we're heading for a timeout courtesy of Yvonne Bracken with 3.50 to play here in the third. Three fifty to go here in quarter three, and Kalosha Enda leading the way by ten at the moment against Kalosh Kiran, as we mentioned earlier. But in case you've just joined us, Kalosha Enda, of course, reigning Subway Schools Cup champions. They won it back in January, winning out over Kenmare with a very very polished performance that day. Yeah, they've been very impressive defensively here. Clash to Kieran have only scored five points in the last 13 minutes of the, uh, action, so a lot of that's down to Clash to Enda's good defence. If they'd been uh, taking a few more options on offence, they may even be up by more. Scully. This time, I was going to say this time gets through, but Ava McLean was having none of it. Yeah, Ava has that bit of size that she's been able to contest shots when anyone does get to the basket. Oh, that's very tough. Yeah, even Walsh headed to the free throw line for Kalosh and a tough call. Yeah, especially when... Uh, look, as And a, it's on Emily Smith. Yeah, the, it's, her, it's her fourth, fourth foul, which yeah. makes it particularly difficult. But if that's the level of contact that's being called, then there should be a lot of fouls down the far end as well. And there'll be a lot of fouls on nearly every play. It didn't look like there was a huge amount there, so for someone to pick up their fourth foul like that is is a difficult one. She gets the first and misses the second, but Kalosh and they get the rebound. And Walsh makes no mistake this time. Three minutes to go here. Smith getting it across that halfway line. Scully, Ibrahim. Harrington with the drive. 
she gets inside well she was just unlucky Connor that time that it didn't go for her yeah but it's a good take and she's being aggressive and that's what they need uh, at times they're a little too passive passing it around the perimeter so they need to have players aggressive like there's more contact there than there was in the fourth foul and it leads to a jump ball so but so be it 2.28 to go here in the third Harrington to Ibrahim Scully has Ava McLean in her way and this time she draws the foul from Katie Dooley yeah it's a good take she gets herself to the free throw line so hopefully they'll be able to get their first points of the second half First one's good. Yeah. Her 10th point of the game. She's been extremely impressive today. Yeah, she's done some excellent work on both ends. Also coordinated her boots to her team's gear, which is always good. <laughs> you and Jason like to do the same. A lovely finish there as well. So three points in quick succession. Yeah, it's a challenge for the Clash to Care on girls because obviously they wear red for the school and then green for Liffey. The so club, yeah. Is it multiple boots? I, I, I don't even know. It's a tough one. It is a tough one. The deliveries to this office of basketball boots are a bit ridiculous now. Between Jason's a bit worse than you, though, I think. I have never got anything delivered to this office. Yeah, <laughs> 147. Yes, you have. You got your Marion boots last year. 147 to go here in third as we go off on a slight tangent about basketball boots. <laughs> Driving from Kalash to Kiran, outside to Smith. Super score from Smith. Yeah, great shot there by Smith. A good pass out to her in the corner. Look, it's, it's a seven-point game. All of a sudden, they've scored six points in quick succession. And then there's a lovely basket from the free throw line by Avalice Haney, which probably wasn't what the defense were expecting. Can Smith hit two in a row? Yeah, Haney just checked into the game there. And what, what a mark to make on it. A lovely score. Yeah. If Smith can channel a clash to Kieran Circa Tiernan from the cup final earlier in the year and just hit seven or threes in this half of the course, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> Would indeed. What a game that was. It's not too much to ask. It's not really, no. Yeah. We had Kira Bracken doing it for this school last year, of course, in the under 19 game. What did she that day? Nine, I think it was. Uh, Scully did a good job there again, getting a rebound, heading to the free throw line. So it took them, what do we say, 13 minutes to score, where they hadn't scored in a row, uh, 13 minutes in a row. And now all of a sudden they've had six and potentially seven within the space of a minute. She misses the two, but super rebounding by Smith. Pops it out to Scully again, Ibrahim. Cross court to Harrington. Pops it inside. She called for a travel. 37.5 seconds to go. Shout out to Keith Kelly of Marie, who's tuning in. Marie, of course, winning the Women's Division One at the weekend and have been promoted to the Women's Super League for next season. So shout out to them. Basketball going well down in Galway. Lovely ball up. And it drops. Yeah, that's what we wanted. A nice shot from Harrington. And a steal. Six seconds to go. Oh, nice move. And, and she she's drawn the heads foul. to the free throw line. Yeah, great stuff there. So Look, if she can knock down one of these, get it back to a six-point game going into the fourth quarter, it's still all to play for. Three-point 
3.9 seconds to go in this third quarter. This is the first. Yeah, but this one will be big still, make it a two possession game. And it's in. Yeah, it takes her total to five for the game, so good work. And a huge shot goes up, but it doesn't fall. And at the end of the third, Kalasha end up 33-27. And we are back with quarter four here in this under 16A final. 33-27, Kalosh and the lead. A good finish to the third quarter though from Kalosh Kiran has closed that gap back. Scully. Shot clock violation here though. Yeah, they need to have a little bit better recognition there as it gets down to the closing seconds. We're at, oh, great steal. <laughs> great anticipation there, stole the pass. But it's at six now, Mary. They really need, the next score is going to be really important if Clash to Kieran can get it, really make Clash to Endo worry. And they do. And they do. Hot dog. 33-29. Well, she had to pick up their own rebound there, but she stepped out of bounds. Yeah, she heel just on honey. the heel just on the sideline. So four-point game. Six fifty-five to go. Uh, you just hope that Emily Smith doesn't pick up a foul, a silly foul at some stage here. Don't, don't jinx her now. Foul called inside. As we said though, a huge credit to Yvonne Bracken and this Clash to Karen team. You lose your best player the week before the final and it looks like things are going against you and they've just kept battling away and we have a really close fourth quarter here. Yeah, they're doing a super job today. Lovely play from Smith and Scully in particular, but there's been battles all over the court for Kalash Shakiran. At the other end though, a lovely, lovely score from Walsh. Yeah, that's a big shot. Classic Karen have done a good job in the half court against the McLeans, but here's a big one from Harrington. Doesn't go. Scully with the offensive rebound. 
Dispossessed though by McLean. Fantastic pass up to Walsh. Walsh's been unlucky there and super work by Smith. Jump ball called and it's going in favour of Kalash Shakiron. Walsh has been instrumental, Connor, a few times that Kalash Shakiron have managed to kind of creep back in. Walsh has managed to get a couple of key baskets. Yeah, she's hit some big shots, all right. Especially because the Clash of on defense are going to sag off a little bit and try and force you to shoot from the outside. It's You have to be able to knock down shots like that. And down the far end, she's doing a good job on Smith. Five seconds on the shot clock. Got to see it. it. Up, yeah. uh, they're going to be happy with that. Kyle Walsh will be happy with that on the bench. It's... Look, it, there's questions being asked of them at the moment, but their defense has really stepped up. And, uh, Super score from Hanny. Yeah, that's her second jump shot of the game in the second half. She hit one from the free throw line as well. And that may be the difference between the teams is that there's just more people able to step up and knock down shots. Another good game there from Alva Harrington as well. There's a stop for. They may have. The referees just consulting with each other. About yeah, I think which direction the. Yeah. yeah. Tony Burke has won that one. So, possession is going to be Klosh Kiran. I think they got to the right call eventually. Eight points, eight point game, five minutes. Look, if you're Clash of Kieran, you're kind of hoping what you need in this last five minutes, 16 points. It may be a big ask. The most they've scored in any quarter is 13, so they really need to be able to knock down a couple of shots or else really lock down and limit Clash down there completely, but that's unlikely for the last five minutes. Shot clock's at eight. They didn't reset it, so they said that they never got possession. Long, long three. No good. And it looks they could be caught by this. Oh. Oh, Smith <laughs> was lucky there, I would say. Yeah. She probably deserved it since one or two of the other ones were probably a little bit questionable. Frantic. Couple yeah. Of seconds here so they need to just settle down get a good shot here if they can Smith does a good job Scully yeah, oh nice. super score it looks like it looked like she was going to take go left but then she just pulled up a little bit quicker and look it's six point game Clash of don't need a home run they need to just keep playing the defense that they have been playing That's a big play by Walsh. I told you, she's the key. She gets those baskets just when they need them. That was a nice pass, but a good block, and it could have been a foul there. Doesn't get called. Ooh. Ooh. That would have been fab if that had got in. Did she just shoot behind back her backwards head? Over. <laughs> But she didn't just chuck it over and she actually shot. Uh, I've never seen it. I don't know if I've seen that. <laughs> You'll have to try out this again against Stevens. Hmm. She's going to the free throw line for two. Nice pass up and a lovely finish. Great score from Amy Kelly and a deserved one. She's been working hard this game. Yeah, nice score by Kelly. So I missed that free throw, sorry. Just correcting our scoreboard here. 
41-33. Out to Smith. Oh. Should have been a football and gone to 14 seconds, but they have possession anyway, 12 seconds. Oh, they have, they've reset it. Wonderful refereeing. 3.07 to play here in the fourth. You get the feeling though that they need a big shot soon. They can't wait too long. Unlucky there from Kelly. Yeah, we're at eight with three minutes to go. Nice pass. Nice pass, yeah. And a nice finish from Power. Back to a 10 point game. You cannot fault Kalosh Kiran though, Connor. No, they've been excellent. Their game plan has been very good. Forced turnovers, press. They even had opportunities that they've missed around the basket, but they've still got 43 points so far. They've really taken advantage of some good athletes that they have in their Sorry, Kalash to Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Kalash have done Enda. a very good. Yes, Kalash And of Enda. course, it is the Magic of Schools games. We have 2.33 to go here, so anything can happen still. McLean, surrounded. Manages to get it off to her sister. They need to get the shot up. And... That's as nearly as good as a score for Kalosh to Kiran. Yeah, long offenses, wear the clock out. Nice pass inside. Good work by Smith to find Scully there, and she heads the free throw line. One fifty three on the clock here. Misses the first. One thirty seven to go and a great score for Kalosha Enda opens it back up to eleven points. Unlucky there. It's gone out of bounds for a uh, Kalosha Enda ball. clean slowing things down to Walsh oh great score from Walsh she's been one of my standouts from this game definitely as I said earlier she's got some key key baskets for them when they really needed it when Kalosh Shakiron were throwing everything at them and then a nice score from her there as well Scully taking on McLean. Intercepted instead. Oh, unlucky there. A bit of an accidental. A foul has been called, but very much just accidental falling over each other there. 59.1 seconds to go here till the All Ireland champion is crowned. Scully. Scully. 
Great work by Emily Smith again. What a game she's had. Scully. And that drops short. 48 seconds to go here. McLean doesn't fall for her. And again, it is Smith. Smith with the long shot. Good rebounding, though, inside from Klasha Enders. Cage Betty. 19 seconds. Yeah, great work by Klasha Enders. Fully deserving of this, Mary. They've been fantastic, as you said. And Klasha Kieran, as we mentioned, coming in without your best player and to put up such a good fight to be only four down in the fourth quarter was a big deal. And there we have it. Full time here at the National Basketball Arena. Kalosha and our double champions. They're going to need a new trophy cabinet down there. 47-34, they have been crowned All-Ireland League champions. This is to go along with their Subway Schools Cup that they won back in January. And we're going to have the presentations from PJ Reedy and Jason Colleen. Jason is wearing lovely burgundy pants today. <laughs> <laughs> lovely burgundy pants. <laughs> and he's nothing to do with the presentation, actually. It's Louise O'Loughlin. As Kalash Shakiran, what a what a game they're after putting on here. Go up to get their silver medals. Yeah, very impressed by obviously Emily Smith and Emma Scully. They're both fantastic, but you see overall, Masterson there on crutches as well. Yeah. It all it all went recovery. downhill when she picked up her injury. That's another terrible pun. Terrible. I'm, I'm getting embarrassed for you now with these bad puns. And Yvonne Bracken, who does so much work out around that school and around basketball in general. Now, your winner, Paul Shepard, number nine, a number three. Four, Amy Walsh. Five, Amy Betty. Yeah, as you said, congratulations to Clash to Ender as well. They were brilliant great intense kind of full court defense throughout and turned over clash to care on a lot and a very smart game plan by kyle walsh and they had different people kind of step up and hit big shots at different stages so a great team effort to to win the game you, you look at the likes of the mcleans obviously avian walsh but then you had the likes of hanny step up and hit two big shots i think she hit the shot when it was back to four, and she extended it back out to six. So, a great team effort and very deserving winners. Yeah, definitely. What a year it's been for them, and what fantastic work being put in. Kyle Walsh and Aideen Dupuer. And we're going to have the MVP presentation. And Avian Walsh, Connor, getting the MVP of the game. What a game she had. Yeah, she was brilliant. She, uh, she played some great defense on uh, Emily Smith at times and then obviously hit some big shots as well. So, yeah, great performance. And there is the cup presentation. Another bit of silverware headed to Galway this week. Congratulations to Kaloshta and uh,